Was there something right, that you, that made you literally laugh when you read it? It was so ridiculous. <laughs> well, probably a lot of them. A lot of Bush's quotes are like that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, which are kind of cheap shots. But I guess one that I really liked in that regard, liked is a form of reference, I, I think. But but uh, there was a time when, uh, soon after the war started, when Bush invited uh, several uh, people who had been the victims, ironically, in Abu Ghraib, among other places, of Saddam's terrorism mm -hmm. and, and torture to come to the U.S. for to have medical aid. And, and we shouldn't, even, even in our anger and humor, forget how awful that all was. I mean, that, that's something that I think progressives forget, is that the last regime wasn't exactly wonderful. But in any case, Bush invited all these guys to come to the White House to celebrate their medical treatment in the U.S. Oh, yes. Yeah, and he, he uh, approached a person on television, actually, mm -hmm. and said, I, it's, a, it's an honor to shake the hand of a man who had his hand cut off by Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. And that's a piece of expertise, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't make that up. He also said that at a menorah lighting ceremony... Oh, yes. <laughs> ...that uh, I couldn't imagine somebody like Osama bin Laden understanding the joy of Hanukkah. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. <laughs> That's an exact one. <laughs> <laughs> that, that puzzle that I guess made me laugh. It is. It, it's it's laughable and it's incredibly sad. I mean, there are, there are a couple of other ones... One of the ones, one of the experts that uh, kind of keeps bowling me off my chair is John Yu. Well, yeah, that, that uh, Victor Navasky had the brilliant idea of saying uh, optional reading the U.S. Constitution. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's the name of one of our chapters. And Yu is really expert at saying things like reasonable people could disagree about the use of torture. Mm hmm. Reasonable people. What are we talking about? <laughs> you know that. Well, I thought his. I thought his gem was, if we are entitled to kill people, we must be entitled to injure them. Well, yeah. <laughs> Very logical. Thought, now, what's wrong with that? Right. So, I mean, it, it makes you re-examine your own feelings. Right. So he says, I don't see how it can be reasonable to have an absolute prohibition on torture when you don't have an absolute prohibition on killing. Well, exactly. <laughs> So it's okay, right? It's fine, yeah. I think it was Deroy Murdoch, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but uh, who said, a columnist who said that waterboarding is something that every American should be proud of. <laughs> and yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we helped invent it, I don't know what, what he meant. Yeah, by the way, taking, taking the experts, uh, some of the experts off the hook for a moment, Chris, you also have a, a wonderful section that things we mustn't do so the terrorists won't win. Yes, and that I really find absolutely hysterical. Basically, if we postpone the Oscars, the terrorists have won the war. That's what well, that's Frank Pearson that said. They should remember right after 9-11, yep. after anything that you wanted to happen, you would say the terrorists have won right. if you didn't do it. Even Martha Stewart... <laughs> Father Stewart had the idea that instead of having a company party, probably to save money, people should have very small parties in their houses, and they didn't agree. Mm -hmm. So she she decided that the terrorists had won because yeah. people wouldn't, wouldn't. To me, the terrorists have certainly succeeded if so few of you participate in a company wide effort to get together. You see? 